I'm David Grayson, one of the co-editors of Cranfield on Corporate Sustainability, and I'm interviewing Professor Keith Goffin, who is the author of the chapter about innovating for sustainability. So, Keith, first of all, um, does a commitment by an organisation, by a company, to embed sustainability, does it change in some way the innovation process? You've asked a good question there, and actually not at all. That's one of the, the key problems around this whole area, is that very often companies will make their commitment to sustainability, which of course is very good, but they then assume that's going to go through the organisation all the way through to the innovation process and make a change, and actually it won't. You really have to be quite proactive about making changes to the innovation process to accommodate sustainability. It's by no means automatic. And there's you know, some quite well-known companies that have done that, that the top level have decided we're going to focus on this, we've got metrics, and then later they've struggled and found out, well, actually they're not flowing through into product design and have really needed to make changes around that area afterwards. So what concretely, if you're advising somebody who is the head of innovation, new business development, what are the kinds of things that they need to be looking out for, especially mm -hmm. if they're going to avoid that kind of, of implementation problem that you've just identified? Well, where I start with companies is to actually look at the process. And in most companies, product development is quite a well-defined process. So for years ago, there was a lot of research done by Canadian professor Bob Cooper, which led to the stage gate process number of stages which it's defined each of the areas contributing to new product development should point out is a very much a cross-functional process so you'll have R and research and development you'll have marketing you'll have manufacturing supply chain management whole list of different functional areas at each stage will have different things they need to work on and between them there are gates where management decide have we succeeded done everything for this stage in order to go on to the next one now, when you look at those processes, what you find is there's very little in there to accommodate really a full sort of sustainability thinking philosophy and to actually get it implemented in the products that come out of an organisation. So where I start, I'll get this process. It's typically a book, probably about 70 pages. Why? Because each stage you've got checklists for every department. So at the early defining what the business case could be type of stage, what do marketing have to do, there'll be a checklist of what they have to do, there'll be a checklist of which the other departments, what they've got to do. Add those all up for the number of stages from you know, concept, business case, development, test and launch. Add all of that up, you've probably gotten typically around 70 pages. I will look at those and I will start to try and pull out at every stage what's defined around sustainability. And what you often find is it's not defined and therefore it gets forgotten. Why does it get forgotten? Because if it's not defined there's lots of other things going on in the team and by definition product development is cross-functional. So marketing will typically be driving the customer needs and are they flowing through into features of the product. R&D have to develop, uh, deliver that. Marketing would like more features. R&D, because they're under pressure, probably want less. So you've already got some competing things. Add manufacturing. They want the product to be easy to manufacture. That maybe makes it harder to develop. So immediately, even with those three, you've got conflicting interests and goals which will lead to, if it's well managed, it will lead to trade-off decisions where I'm trying to make the best decision across all these departments. Add in sustainability into already a competing area where there's tensions, the danger is that sustainability is the, the new kid on the block joining that team and well okay we've got other things and other priorities. So it really does need the top level or corporation, company focus on sustainability and then to say how are we going to implement it. So what I typically do with companies then is look at every stage and say how are we going to do this and then also check that the managers involved in the gates making those decisions really look at these trade-offs and say well okay we want more sustainability thinking in there that's probably going to have some negative effects on some of the other areas of the project overall what's the best decision and if that's not really well understood the danger is whoever is trying to drive sustainability just comes a across a lot of roadblocks. If you look back in the history, uh, manufacturing was the sort of the poor relative in product development if you go back to the 80s and you literally had companies developing cars and when they got to the last stage of production and launch you couldn't manufacture it. You know, the doors wouldn't fit correctly and things like that because manufacturing had got forgotten. Manufacturing is well implemented in this process now. Sustainability unfortunately isn't. So it's, it's that level of detail. It's not just saying, let's you know, really focus our company, have some top level objectives. It's getting it into the process and then having a champion who can look at that level of detail and get it to flow through.
Keith, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, David.